warmest wishes from Arrow here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The 25th anniversary of the Beijing Platform for Action is celebrated today on September 15th. And yet, even today, uh, you can find stories like that of 17-year-old Mawada, who grew up in a small village in Indonesia called Biran Tambalanga. She always dreamt of becoming a doctor in the family, but her family had other plans for her. She was married as a child, not once, but twice, due to the strong religious and cultural beliefs of her community. Families consider it shameful if their daughters aren't married before the tender age of 17. After her equally young first husband left her, her family remarried her to another man. The underage bride now hopes for a better future for her own children. Uh, the Beijing Platform for Action is important because 25 years down in the line, we are still far from reaching gender equality uh, in any substantive manner across many of the countries, not only in the Asia Pacific region, but also across the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has actually laid bare some of the glaring disparities between men and women in our part of the world. The Beijing Platform for Action is relevant today for its ambitions and visionary strategies across the 12 areas of concern. Many commitments will remain unachievable unless structural barriers are addressed. But also, the world has changed a great deal since 25 years ago. We are now at the critical center of the flaws of the globalized system, which is increasingly militarized, patriarchal, police, uh, and some of these uh, existing structural barriers, such as race, gender, have come to fore in the last one or two years. You know, the Beijing Platform for Action itself, you know, draws its mandate from CEDAW, the three previous work on world conferences on women, including Mexico, Copenhagen, and Nairobi, and the Vienna Convention on Human Rights. And some of these core principles in these conventions and these conferences need to be really carried forth in this present world today and realized in this world today. The Beijing Platform for Action also places a special emphasis on sexual and reproductive health and rights through its strategies and actions which state that it is the right of all women to be informed and to have access to safe, effective, affordable and acceptable methods of SRH. Uh, we remain concerned about the constant pushbacks, especially on the SRHR uh, of women and girls, uh, and the lack of resources, changing environments, and shrinking spaces for civil society organizations' engagements in all processes to advance women's rights and gender equality at local, national, regional, and global levels. SRH is a core human right of all women and girls, and not limited to healthcare services. We fully support rights of women and girls and young people, including their rights to control over and decide freely over matters related to their sexuality, including uh, access to contraception, information, and comprehensive sexuality education, and access to safe abortion services. The Asia and the Pacific region is a region which continues to be defined by deep and entrenched inequalities. Women in all of their diversities remain marginalized and denied their human rights. Patriarchal, militaristic, and authoritarian governments are rising across the region, leading to increased attacks on feminist and women human rights defenders. On this very significant day to commemorate the 25th uh, anniversary of the Beijing Platform for Action, we call on member states to recommit to the Beijing Declaration to ensure acceleration of actions uh, to achieve gender equality in a meaningful way for all women and girls. This will require removal and structural and systemic barriers and upholding commitments to fully implement the Sustainable Development Goals, um, as well as to fulfill all of the human rights uh, obligations that they have signed on to under CEDAW. And we need to actually look at the principles and objectives of the ICPD in, in addition to the Beijing Platform for Action and the Agenda 2030. We need to strengthen uh, the gender architecture accountability at all level, and we need to uphold SRHR, including ensuring universal access to health care for all and addressing unmet need for all SRH information and services, particularly access to contraception, safe abortion, ensuring comprehensive sexuality education, and recognizing SOGI. 
the private health sector must be regulated in order to provide acceptable, affordable, accessible, and quality health services and ensure dignity and respect and privacy and confidentiality. Governments must also work uh, in order to end discriminatory laws and practices that perpetuate violence, legitimize child marriage, criminalize consent in relation to sexual autonomy of young people, and also those that maintain inequalities in inheritance, citizenship, nationality, marriage, and its dissolution.